Hi, welcome again to another video in the MySword Bible application for Android series. Uh, this is probably going to be my last one. Uh, as you may have seen before, I spent the first uh, video talking about these these uh, buttons and, and all the different options up at the top. The second video, I talked about the, the bottom buttons. I even talked about uh, you know how to get it to look similar to mine, if that was what you're interested in. You know how I made these uh, this look this way. Also, how to download um, modules in the native um, way here. But today, what I wanted to do is actually show you how I can or I use this thing and how you can use this application to uh, do some pretty decent Bible study. And so, what I wanted to say right off the bat is that. I think what makes this a powerful application is the the way that you can download, uh, you know, the the dictionaries and the Bibles because I think that's where uh, the the real uh, usefulness of this application is. And you don't have to be stuck with just the ones that you can download natively. You can go to BibleSupport.com and you can download my sword modules there, or you can also download uh, eSword modules and there is a way i think it's an application that you can download that will allow you can to convert them from eSword modules to my sword so you can put those modules straight into your phone using your computer just put the bibles in the bible app uh, folder and the commentaries in the commentary folder so on and so forth but today i want to talk about uh i guess some of the tools and things that you can use in this application and uh, go from there. So I wanted to start in Psalm chapter 22, which is a, a chapter that is uh, widely known as a messianic psalm. And you can tell up here at the top, it says, My God, my God, Ale is God in Hebrew. We're going to come back to that here in a little bit. But my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we know from uh, the Gospels that while Jesus was on the cross, this was something that he, he spoke and it kind of points us to this particular uh, psalm. And there are some other things in here that I believe are messianic, and we're going to talk about one of those in particular. But uh, one thing I want to tell you is see how I've got chapter 22, verse 1 selected here. If I went down here and I started looking at verse 16, which is what we're going to do here in a few minutes, if I wanted to look at another version of it, say this particular in a linear that I have, if I just click on this, it's not going to know that I'm looking at 16. And this is something that I've I've done in the past that, you know, I'll get to a particular verse and I'm like, okay, so let's see, there's 11. Oh, wait, here's 16. This is the one I'm looking at. And I'll switch. You know, it, it's going to take me back to 11. And I may think that I'm on 16 and I'm sitting here looking. I'm like, yeah, this doesn't make sense. So anyway, just make sure that you select the verse that you're looking into. So right now we're going to look at verse 16, and let me read that to you real quick. For dogs have surrounded me, a crowd of evil ones have circled me, piercing my hands and my feet. So right off the bat, you know, uh, you can see that this might be something uh, that, that points to uh, Jesus. It's uh, something that the New Testament points back to to say, hey, this is a a prophecy that Jesus fulfilled, having his hands and his feet pierced. Um, but one day as I was reading this, I noticed there was this little superscript here, this A. When I clicked on it, it says some manuscripts, that's what MSS stands for, some manuscripts have like a lion my hands and my feet, or they dug my hands and my feet. And you can tell that that, that kind of takes away the prophetic, uh, you know, not necessarily meaning, but the the you know what uh, what the the New Testament was pointing back to as a fulfillment of prophecy that kind of takes away some of the weight of that. You know, okay, if it's if it's like a lion, what does that what does that even mean, and how do we get that? Well, let's let's take a look at this particular verse, and I'm going to go to compare, and this is what I did that day. I went to compare, and I started looking at all the different translations. Well, this ABP is the uh, Apostolic Bible Polygot, and I believe it's it's pretty much the Septuagint. And here, right here, you can see that this is 
uh, they dug into my hands and my feet. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty much the same thing as pierced. They dug. They 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 pierced. You know, I'm not saying they got shovels, but it's kind of the same idea that they they dug into by piercing his hands and his feet. And one thing that you is interesting that you you might uh, need to know is that the Septuagint is a Greek translation of a much older Hebrew that is no longer existent, okay? So, and there were Jews that translated that. So they translated about two to four hundred years before uh, Christ, right? Before Jesus. So we'll keep going down and I'll show you some other things. Let me show you these, uh, these superscripts or these notes. It'll say, there we go. So the Dead Sea Scrolls, okay, and I believe what it's saying is the Dead Sea Scrolls translate it like, like we have it here. They have pierced my hands and my feet. But the Masoretic text reads, like a lion they pin my hands and feet. Well, how is it that the Masoretic text has that? And I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. This right here is the Tanakh. This right here is Ka'ari. And I, I may be uh, pronouncing that uh, a little off, but it's... It's uh, basically two words. Uh, this prefix here, ka, it means like or as. And then ari is lion. And I'm going to show you that here in a minute. But that's what the Masoretic text reads. So how do they get, um, you know, they pierce my hands and my feet. Where does that come from exactly? And what's nice is you can click on all these different things. And here is uh, ka'ari, which means like a lion. Uh, and it's interesting that it has all this, uh, this information here for you to go through. And here in a second, I'm going to show you my, uh, actually went and found in the Dead Sea Scrolls what is being uh, shown here. But you see some of these translations actually have, like a lion, uh, they are at my hands and my feet. But let's go on up here to the, uh, I've got two different Hebrew versions here. Uh, this one right here. It has the Ka'ari, but right here, this one's got Ka'aru. What is the difference? Well, let's see. Let's go up here to, or down here. This one's got a nice, nice note here. The Masoretic text takes the word for pierced in Psalm 22, 16. Not sure why it's being highlighted or boxed in there. In Psalm 22:16, a clear crucifixion psalm, Ka'aru, and changes the last letter from a Vav to a Yud or a Yod. Um, the change of the letter changes the meaning from pierced my hands and feet to lion, as in a lion, uh, they are at my hands and my feet. The Septuagint has pierced from the original Hebrew, Ka'aru, not Ka'ari. According to the Dead Sea Scrolls, dated about 100 BCE, the Hebrew word in verse 16 is ka'aru, pierced, and not lion. And not, um, not only that, but the Aramaic Peshitta also agrees with the Septuagint. And it's nice to have all of these, these little notes and things that you can go to that are, that are there in these particular versions. But here we have, you can see the prefix. Let me get out of the way of the orange there. This is ka, which means as or like. And this is Ari, lion. And you can click on this and you can see, there it is, Ari is lion. So how do we have this difference? What's this difference from? Now, I don't know if it was um, something done intentionally um, or if it was something done unintentionally, but because of a, a you know, a scrabble error or a... Uh, you know, something was not very clear. And I'll show you what I mean by that here. I had took a picture, a screenshot, uh, of the uh, Dead Sea Scroll uh, clipping or, or uh, you know, fragment here. And this is in scanned infrared negative because if you were to look at the, uh, the actual photograph, this would be even more difficult to make out. And this is an... Uh, the block script and it's a little bit different than it is today but you can kind of see the letters here this is uh, uh what looks like an older version of a kaf this looks like an aleph right here this looks like a a, a resh 
and this looks like a vav to me. And I believe this is a yud or a yod right here. And you can see it kind of has this little hook right here at the top. And it looks like an apostrophe in our language right now. Um, that's kind of the size of the yod. The vav, it kind of looks like a, a nail uh, or, or just a, almost like an eye. And what I did in this first slide that you saw is my attempt to kind of trace over it to show you what I believe is actually say, uh, you know, being written here. And I believe that is Ka'aru, which is, you know, pierced and not like a lion. But it's interesting that you can go through this and I am not sure. There we go. Uh, but it's really nice to to be able to have all of these things that you can go and look at it and see um, you know what what is exactly is going on and why are there differences uh, but let's go back to let's go back to our main version that I like to use here and we'll go up to the very top and I don't know you feel you noticed something that I did I double clicked on it and now that I double clicked on it you know all of the 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 extra stuff at the top and at the bottom they all went away so now I'm just left with just text which is nice if, if you're just doing some reading uh, because this does take up quite a bit of, of room, these, these, uh, these top borders here. But I wanna go back here and I'm gonna just use this kind of as, a, as an example of you know, some things that we can do with this, this tool, this, this application. So right here, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So let's look at it at the, in the end of linear. And you'll see, my God is Eli. And Eli comes from this word, Ale. And what I did is when I clicked on, let me go back to the Bible, when I clicked on the Hebrew, uh, the Strong's word, or the Strong's number here, it will open up this. And this is my default um, dictionary. So anytime I click on a word that will, or a Strong's number or something like that, when I want to investigate a particular word, in my settings, I have this set up as my default dictionary. And what's nice about this one, this is something that's uh, fairly new to me, is it has a lot of information on one screen, whereas before I was, I was clicking on different things. So for example, let's say that I just open this up in Strong's. And you can see here that I've got some definitions. It says, okay, this is how you pronounce it. Uh, this is what it is, God, Godlike, and et cetera, and so on. And you can see that it's a, a shortened form of this one. Uh, and I think they all kind of come back to, well, that's interesting. But let's go back. So let's say I wanted to see, okay, so I know this one. What if I wanted to see what the Greek equivalent of this word was? Well, I have this, this, this other dictionary here, and it's uh, Septuagint, which is what LXX stands for. And it's a Hebrew Greek. And basically what it'll do is it'll take any Hebrew or Greek word and it will show you um, equivalents, like uh, other, other ways these words are translated in Greek or Hebrew. So since our main word is a Hebrew word, which is where the H comes from, you can see down here all of the Greek words that uh, kind of are also translated um, as, as ale or from ale. And you can see agalos, which is, uh, I believe, angel. Uh, let's see here. You got theos. Uh, you've got uh, curios. Uh, this is uh, God, and this is Lord, I believe. And you can click on one of these. And uh, again, this is bringing up my default. But you can click on these, and you can look at them. Another thing you can do is, let's go back to this. Well, actually, let me go back to the Strong's here. I can go to the King James Concordance, and it will show me all the places that it's that it's used in the King James, and what it's translated as in the King James. Okay, and your translation, your favorite translation, may not be um, exactly like the King James. So you'll have to click on it and then check out your particular version. You can see mine; it uses the word "ale" instead of "God." Um, so that's neat. But what's interesting is, is if I were to use the, uh, 
this particular dictionary, it's already got all of these Greek words. There's agalos again, theos, uh, kurios, um, let me see, that's elios, I believe, or huh, eliud. Yeah, so my, my Greek is even worse than my Hebrew, Eliud. So anyway, it's nice, and it's got the Strong's right here, and uh, tells you what it's derived from, and it also gives you some King James uh, usages there. Another thing that's nice is um, this one right here. It's the Ancient Hebrew Lexicon. And the Ancient Hebrew is written in this uh, pictographic stri uh, script. And right here you've got an ox head. And it says that the pictograph uh, for Aleph is the picture of an ox head and also represents its strength. Uh, this that looks like a little J or a shepherd's hook is a picture of a shepherd's staff and also represents the authority of the shepherd. So combined, these two pictographs mean the strong authority. So when they think of ale, they don't think of the word or similarity to the word God. They think of the strong authority. And it's uh, similar for like uh, the word for father. Um, the word father is av in Hebrew. And aleph, again, is this, this ox head. But the vav or the bet, uh, excuse me, not vav, uh, the bet or the vet here, the second letter is, uh, is a, a symbol of a tent. So when they think of father, they don't necessarily think of father or av. They don't think of father, but they think of the, the strength or the, the leader of the home, the strength of the home. And uh, so it's interesting because uh, Hebraic thought they don't think of uh, things the way that we do today. It's different. And I think it's important that while we study Scripture, that we study it in the mindset of the people that we're reading and writing it so that we can get what, you know, what they're trying to get across. And it's, it's really interesting. So I encourage you to get this one as well. This is a, a dictionary. It's the Ancient Hebrew Lexicon. So let's see, there was something else I was going to talk about. Oh wait, let's go back to the dictionary. So when you click on a word, uh, notice that some of these are green, some of these are white. The ones in white have no entries. Uh, so you want to, when you have a, a particular word highlighted, you're going to want to stick with the, the green. Because all the ones that are in green have, have some kind of an entry for you. And uh, that's really nice to have so that you can, you're not wasting time clicking on ones that don't have anything. Because obviously I have quite a few dictionaries here. So you can just make sure that you're clicking on and looking at the different ones. So uh, there was one other thing that I was going to tell you. And uh, if you've done any studying in the languages or anything like that before, you may have heard of this. But there is uh, something that I found recently called Kare Kativ. Um, and Kare Kativ is actually Aramaic. So let me find a verse. And these are actually, uh, from what I understand, all throughout the New Testament, or excuse me, the Old Testament. And let's see. This is chapter 9 of Genesis. And let me see. Here we go, it's verse 21. Sorry, I should have clicked on this before. So verse 21, and I'm going to go to compare. And what we'll see here is this little, this little cross here. And we can tell that there's a, a difference in, um, you know, what is, what is written versus what is spoken. And that's what this Kare means. And this is Aramaic, but uh, for me, it, uh, it sounds a lot like the Hebrew for uh, to call, and that is kara. And ketib sounds like uh, katav, which is to write. So what they do is they say they've written off to the side, and this is, in the, in the, uh, this is something that the scribes do. So they don't want to profane the text necessarily by, by changing it. 
So what they'll do is they'll, they'll put what's written, but off to the side, they'll say, but what is spoken is this. So when they read this particular word or verse, they don't read it as it is written. They read it with the little subscript off to the side. So for instance, katib, what is written here is her tent. So this word right here is ohel. Uh, excuse me, I'm trying to get it right here. And then we've got this suffix here at the end, which uh, is the, the letter hey, and that denotes it's a f feminine, like her tent. And over here we have the same thing, it's ohel, but at the end it's got this this uh, vav at the, at the end, the suffix vav, and that is his tent. It's an o sound. So we've got ohelo and ohala. And I may be uh, messing the stress up or, or whatever, how to pronounce that. But basically, uh, it's a difference. It says, and he took the wine of it and was overcome by drink and he was uncovered. See, all of the versions say his tent. But here clearly, well, excuse me. Let's look down through here and we'll see. There we have, oh, hello. That's what is written, but this is what is spoken. Oh, hello. And it's nice, there is this, uh, this part right here. It tells us, so with a footnote, all modern translation have his tent. But the Hebrew spelling of this word should be translated as her tent. The Hebrew spelling may be an error. Okay, so this is it. It says the Hebrew spelling may be in error. Okay, or it may not be. But he says in the modern Bedouin culture, which is very similar to the ancient Hebrew culture, the family tent is owned by the wife. Therefore, it is possible that the Hebrew uh, text may be the word her tent in reference to this cultural context. See, what I've learned is, is that in every location in the Bible where it says his tent, it's actually her tent when it's talking about, in, in I guess, in a marital aspect. It's her tent. And even though the father is the head of the house or the tent, like I was telling you before in the word of, he is the head of the tent, the authority of the tent, the strength of the tent. The tent is owned by the wife. And while that may or may not add much to the, to the meaning of what it is that you're reading, uh, I believe that, you know, it's nice to know uh, I think that they wrote what they wrote, and they did it uh, with intention. So those are some things that you can find out using all these, all these uh, different translations. Notice that I have the subscript, and, and some of them don't make any kind of a note to it at all. So it's nice to have these things. Uh, let's see what this one says. Okay, this one just tells you what a tin is. It's nice. But here you can see that there's a difference. It's got the got the two written one is in little little subscript or superscript up here uh, in italics and here you've got ohel which means tent you can click on excuse me you can click on this right here and you can see that it means tent so it's really neat some of the things and you know just to give you an idea I don't I don't use uh, commentaries a whole lot but if I were so interested I can click on a commentary and I can go down here and see which commentaries uh, had some information. Now, this is treasurer's scripture knowledge. Uh, and this actually uh, tells you more. It's not just commentaries, but it tells you some more information on where, where you can find uh, some things about these, this particular verse. Uh, maybe some cross-references and things like that. But if you were so inclined, you can click on and you can see what other people think about uh, these particular verses and you know what they may have gone into uh, you know quite a bit about that as well uh, but anyway I think I'm gonna wrap this one up uh, just uh, my suggestion to you is just to spend some time in here uh, I do suggest also to get as many Bible translations as you can I've got a lot and as you can tell you know not all of them have uh, information. Uh, so this one right here, it's either it's either just for New Testament. This one may be just Greek uh, New Testament, um, and likewise, you know, these are all Greek 
likewise, when you're in the Old Testament, you may not have, or you definitely won't have some of these other ones. This right here is, is Aramaic. Well, the Targums, these are Aramaic, and uh, they're just the Torah, I believe. But the more that you have available to you, the more likely you are to, to find uh, different things. And, um, you know, if you're as interested in, uh, as I am in uh, the ancient languages and, and discovering, you know, what was really uh, written and what was really said and what was really being meant, uh, then uh, I believe this will help you out um, more than just staring at a, a single version in a, in a written uh, book, which I certainly don't have a problem with, with using Bibles uh, or written Bibles. Um, but this is a great tool that's for free. And uh, just real quick, I just wanted to say one other thing that all of the things that you've seen me do today, you can do for free. Um, I do have the, uh, I guess the the most. Uh, uh, the highest version possibly is a way to explain that, but I paid the uh, $50 uh, required donation to have that. And the things that you can do with, with that uh, are, you know, stuff to do with the sharing, um, highlighting words, uh, split pane, formatting. Uh, but everything that you've seen me do today, you can do for, with the free version. Uh, if you want to copy a verse, uh, you can do it this way. But if you want to do multiple verses, I think you're going to have to have the paid version, do the shared content, and then click the range that you want to have. And that way, it will actually bring up, you know, uh, different applications that you can share that with. But this way, what you can do is it copies it to your clipboard, and then you can go onto Facebook, Twitter, or wherever it is that you want to paste. Uh, but for free version, I have to say, I do really enjoy this application. Uh, all of it is always at my fingertips. So whether I'm at work uh, or away from home or wherever, you know, I may not have my laptop with, with this Bible software and this Bible software, but I will always have my phone. And my phone has all of this at my fingertips. And uh, it's really nice to have. So hopefully this helped you out. If it did, you know, let me know. Uh, if you've got some other things that you do that, that I didn't explain in this, let me know. Uh, you know, I'm always wanting to, to be able to use this thing even more, learn more about it, and use it to its fullest potential. But uh, with that, I'm going to be done. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, just like I said, be sure to, uh, to let me know what you think if you've enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Uh, God bless.